What up, what up? Salvador Brigman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about crowdfunding, raising money, Kickstarter campaigns, Indiegogo campaigns, how do you actually get past your goal when it comes to a crowdfunding campaign? And today, I think I actually want to talk about comic books. Comic books are one of the largest categories on Kickstarter. I have a lot of students that are part of my course, Smash Your Kickstarter Goal, who actually are doing comic books. And I think this is an important video because there is a lack of high quality educational information out there. And whenever I see that, it's almost like I feel summoned. It's like my bat signal, right? I see that and I'm like, dude, we got to demystify this for people. We got to put this out there so that many thousands of people around the world can actually understand what they got to do to get their hands, to get the hands of other people, uh, you know, put that comic book in their hands. So I want to talk about that today. I uh, get into how to market your comic book and some of the things that I recommend uh, in this industry. And also when it comes to a Kickstarter campaign, some of the things you should know going into that. And we're getting to that in just a second. All right, all right. Again, my name is Salvador Brigman. Welcome back to this channel. If you are a longtime viewer or listener, please give me a thumbs up and let me know that you appreciate this video. I always leave a positive comment, something encouraging, so other people know this is worth their time. But that being said, if you're trying to market a comic book, and again, this is one of the most popular categories out there when it comes to Kickstarter campaigns. We have a lot of people in my community, the CrowdCrux community on my website, crowdcrux.com. Uh, we have tons of people on my forum, kickstarterforum.org, as well as within our private community. Uh, and also we've taken my course, Smash Your Kickstarter or goal who are doing comic books. And this is one of the biggest misnomers, one of the biggest misconceptions out there. And I got to talk about this in this video. So first of all, if you go out there and we see, okay, what are some of the ways in which to market your comic book? You know, we do that simple search. We try to research and try to figure this out. Well, you can print tees, right? You could print tees for your crowdfunding campaign. You could do some offline marketing in this way, right? You could maybe even have some merchandise, stuff like that, right? And these look great. Like I have nothing wrong with that. You know, obviously it looks nice in terms of illustration. You can print promote it in different ways with using like banners here. We put this up in your hometown. This is cool. But to me, this is kind of like old school marketing, dude. Like I'm not just not interested in this. I don't want to put it, take all the time to do that. And also just the level of effort that goes into this. And there's no way to track the results. So while I have nothing against this website and this the, the writer of this article, and I really think that these are some good ideas, they aren't the way that I would go about this. And that's why you're watching this channel, right? It's to really understand what I recommend when it comes to doing this. If you go to another resource, here, what are some of the ways to actually promote your comic book, right? What are some of the ways to get the word out there about this? If you go here, well, they say you should launch your comic book website, you should do a blog, publish news, right? Who's going to publish news about your, your comic book? Uh, you could do updates, which I do think is interesting, you know, thoughts on the comic book trends and new releases. You could do eventually your online store. You have a, an author page here. We're obviously trying to do a Kickstarter campaign. Usually if you're, you're listening to this channel, I could do social media. So these are some decent ideas, right? when it comes to the buzzword of digital marketing, paying for ads, literally just says like pay for ads. There's no handholding whatsoever. Create a brand, like that's so easy, right? Just create, go out there and create a brand. So to me, I do, I like to do like this one, highlighting your fans. I, I love that one. That's a really good uh, point in my mind. I don't think this is very useful. I'm just gonna go out there and say, I don't think that's super useful, man. Um, we got some other ones, uh, you know, when it comes here in terms of what you should do. So again, I have nothing against these sites and I think they're they're pretty decent here, but um, you know, Comic Cons, I do like in-person events. I think in-person events are a great way to promote the comic book, get feedback, and also so incredibly important to get photos of other people looking at the comic book or getting photos of you showing it off. That's actually really cool. I do think also networking with people who own bookstores is a great idea, but I think it's a little bit sparse here. I think it's a little bit sparse when it comes to social media, what you should actually do. And to me, if I was to read this, I'd be like, well, I don't feel like I really understand what to do. So actually what I want to do today is I want to give you a unique way way in which you can not only market your comic book, but you can also grow a massive tribe of people that are excited and that are hanging on your every single word. Whether your comic book is designed to change the world or to introduce people to a new genre in a different way, to show off your artwork, or just has really compelling and interesting characters, what I'm going to be teaching you today is literally going to change the trajectory of your career. And this is just a slice. This is just a sample. This is just the tip of the iceberg of what I talk about in in my best-selling book, The Kickstarter Launch Formula, which if you're interested in getting an audible version, you like the way I talk, you like the way that I teach and you'll kind of go through this, you can actually go and check out The Kickstarter Launch Formula. I'll put a link down below. You can get it for $0. You can actually get a free copy if you sign up for a free 
30-day trial of Audible. Go check out the Kickstarter launch formula at the link down below at crowdcrux.com slash kickstarter formula or crowdcrux.com slash kickstarter audio rather. The, um, the other one was actually taking my paperback version. But um, that being said, kind of let's get into this. So to me, again, the thing is, how do you actually build an audience? How do you get people excited about what you're doing? And how do you do this in a way where you don't have to go door to door really showing off your comic book? The way that I would like to introduce you is to actually use a tool. And I think that as a business owner, as a creator, as a um, designer, or as a creative type, or as a writer, however you want to think of it yourself, as a storyteller, you're really only as good as the tools in which you have access to. If you think back to the Stone Ages, right? How did people tell stories? Well, they gathered around the campfire, right? They told the story or they etched and sketched things on the actual cave wall. But what ended up happening is we started to invent things. We invented the paper. We invented pencils. We invented pens. We invented the typewriter, right? We invented a way to actually have photos. We invented film and videos. And the more that as a creative type, you lean into technology and tools and ways of making processes easier, it actually is a powerful way to supercharge your ability to tell stories. And that's the end of the game. You know, what, what are you really trying to do here? So I want to introduce you to this tool that I use, which is called Lead Pages. So Lead Pages is a really cool tool that you can use to do one thing and one thing only, and that's to build an audience before you actually come out with a product. How do you build an audience of people that are hanging on your everywhere that are excited to find out about your comic book? The way you do that is you use this tool, which is called lead pages. I'm going to share with you step by step how to actually go about achieving that and how to do it much faster and much quicker than you ever imagined possible. And again, this the goal here is to not only have an online presence and grow a brand, but to collect an audience, to get people to build a wait list, to get people excited. And even if you want to, you could sell products using the tool that I'm going to be mentioning here today. So first of all, I think this is really important um, just to understand kind of what goes into the tool here. We're going to be starting with with some of the templates. We're talking about the pricing a little bit as well. What do you get for this tool? And uh, this is a tool that I use. And if you go through the link that I'm going to mention today for lead pages, you will actually be able to sign up and um, we will get a small commission at no expense to you. And we really just put this back into running the show, producing great content, great videos, great education. So thank you so much. If you do decide to go through the link down below at crowdcrux.com slash lead pages. Okay, so let's get started here. So first of all, the cool thing about this is that you can choose from many different templates. And if you're like a little bit skeptical, you could actually go and browse these publicly. You could see some of the different, what are called landing page templates, which are available to you once you start using lead pages. Now you could actually also use this tool to set up your website. I would, I would recommend, uh, you know, starting with the landing page for many of you out there. If you did want more branding, you want it more of like a full flush website, you could very easily choose from one of these templates to be able to set up your own website this way. However, like I said, for the vast majority of you, I'm going to recommend actually that you start with a landing page. Okay. And I'll tell you exactly why a landing page is designed to do one thing. People are meant to come there and to provide their contact information in some way. So for example, we come here, uh, maybe if we search landing pages, let's go here, let's search these by book. Okay, I'm going to come here and click, just click book. And again, this is public to everyone. You guys can all see some of the different high level landing pages which are available. A couple popped up already, as you can see. We got one here that looks like it's on iPad and you can customize that. Looks like you got one here that looks more paperback version and you can customize that landing page. You got another one here. All right, so they give you a couple of ideas of what it looks like in terms of book landing pages. So why would you want to have something like this and how would you use it? So I'm going to go back here to um, when you sign up for the tool because you get a little bit more functionality that that way you can actually see how the sucker works. So I'm gonna come back here. So I put in book into the search. What would you wanna do in order to encourage people to provide their contact information who might be interested in finding out about your comic book? Well, I'm just gonna go with a very simple, easy idea. What if you allow people to download a free copy of a couple of pages, like a sample of your comic book? And maybe on that landing page, you showed a really cool cover, a really interesting cover design. Or you even had some snippets on that landing page of the characters, what it's about, what is the um, story arc, right? What are people trying to do in the book? What is the genre of the book? Having a little bit of information 
information to provide, some contextual storytelling there. So you could come here and you could select any of these different landing pages and you could begin to customize this in terms of the look and the feel for your comic book. So let's rather than just you know talking about this, let's try to give you a simple example. So let's just start here with this one because I think this is pretty easy. If we wanted to, we could preview it, but I'm just going to start building this and we can start to begin to see kind of the kernel of the idea of which I'm trying to incept into your mind right now. The goal here is to build a wait list. The goal here is to build an audience. And the way you do that is by starting with a place where you can actually build that audience. So when you have a landing page, you can send people there and then they can magically learn more about your comic book. And then if they're interested, they can download a free copy of a couple of different pages. So we're going to say comic book example here, comic book example. And I'm writing this while talking, which is one of the little known arts of teachers like myself. Um, I actually do a ton of different uh, classes. You know, I have my, obviously my Smasher Kickstarter goal program. We also do semester based live group classes uh, on the subject of Kickstarter and different ones as well. So I, I do, I do a lot of teaching and it's one of the things I love. I'm, I'm so passionate about this, man. But um, anyway, to get back to the point. So we just literally picked out a way in which we wanted to look and feel, you know, a kind of a design when it comes to the comic book. So you could come here now and you could begin to customize all of this in the way that it looks for yours. So for example, you could pick out maybe some and upload some if you wanted to here. So you would just come here and you'd select this and you go and you would upload one of your images here if you wanted to see that, or you can select from premium images here on the left. Um, other things are you could change a little bit of the look and the feel of this particular block, just clicking this here. So actually, you know, it would be more better. I'm just gonna have this be aligned left. Maybe that will, there you go. <clears throat> so you can see how that updates very easily. And that way, uh, if you want to, you could change the look and the feel. So I'm gonna just go back here. I'm gonna change the center. I honestly think the, the logo is actually one of the least most important areas when it comes to building the landing page. Um, you wanna direct people more so to the actual product. So some of the simple ones we would make here would be changing the photo of this particular guy to be that of the comic book photo, which probably looks cool or interesting. Uh, then you can have maybe the title of the comic book or the genre of the comic book, or even a quote, for example, of what people are saying, like the most action-packed read I've come across in a decade or something like that, right? You could then maybe have a couple of different you know, high-level points of who, who the, the what the story arc is like, or what are the different characters, or what's the challenge, or you know what, what is the whole zest when it comes to the actual content. You could then come here and you can edit this pop-up of get the guide. You could change that maybe to download uh, the first chapter or you could download a sample or something like that. Uh, let's just say we wanted to capture more information than just the email. Like the email is great, but I like to know people's first names so I can actually communicate with them, right? So we come here, we go to fields. We would click add field. We would select name. Other ones we could actually collect if we wanted to would be phone number. You could call them up and give them, ask them to give you feedback if you wanted to. Um, other ones would be asking for consent, right? Postal code. There's a lot of different stuff. We're just going to add name here and we click that name button. In a second, that's going to populate. <clears throat> so we got now email. You can see here on the right, email and first name. Okay. We're just going to click done. My, my computer is being slowed up significantly by recording this. We'll click next. And then we have actions. So I'm gonna kind of go through this in a little bit more step-by-step -step fashion, but just kind of giving you a quick idea of like what you can do here. You know, if we wanted to, we could send people to another landing page, to an external URL, could have them remain on the page. If you wanted to, you could deliver <clears throat> the actual comic book here via a lead magnet. So you would just upload the PDF of the comic book here, and then lead pages would automatically email them that particular, that comic book if you wanted to. So there's a lot of things that you can do here. So let's first of all, go through this in a step-by-step -step fashion, but I just want to give you a quick ideas. Hey, literally within this, this section of the video, you've already discovered a tool which you can use to build a very simple landing page. Number two, how easy it is to customize that. You could upload your own cover photo. You could customize this information. You could also extend this if you wanted to. So for example, you come here on the left, we have different sections here. So you could add an about you section if you wanted to, and maybe talk more about you as the author if you really wanted to get into that information. So we'd come here, let's see if we can drag this. It might take me a second here. We're, gonna, we're just gonna put it put it down here so we can we can see maybe. Okay, so again, this is kind of slowing up my browser a bit, but uh, we got the section here. So if we wanted to, we could customize that. We could change the button, delete the button. And maybe this is just has some more information about who the author is of the comic book. So the way that lead pages works, it works in sections. Every single piece on the page is a section and you can come here and you can change different ones. So like, for example, you could have a logo section, a testimonial section, text and image section, 
uh, FAQs, features and services, all this kind of stuff you can include here on different sections. In addition, if you wanna do more drag and drop, you can come in here. If you had, for example, a video trailer, you could come here and you could drag and drop that video here into the section you want to. You could have a form, progress bar, icons, all that kind of stuff. Very easy. So at this point in time, you now have discovered a simple tool to be able to do this. And I'm gonna include a link to that tool in the description down below. So let's kind of talk about this more in a step-by-step -step fashion, because I think that you know, I'm kind of going through this in a fast way, and I really wanna break this down more step-by-step. -step. So step one is to select the actual template, which you wanna use, and then to begin to customize that into the look and the feel of what you're going for when it comes to your comic book. So the way in which you do that is you come here on the left, pretty much all of your selections are gonna be here on the left in terms of page layout, um, the way it looks, the style, and you can select this little, little uh, button here, that little gear icon you can see here, right next to the section styles, and that's gonna allow you to customize it. So if you wanted to, we could choose a different image, we could choose a color, you can change things when it comes to the alignment of that image. So just to kind of make this a little bit uh, more interesting, let's choose uh, an image color. Let's choose a color, so that way you can see the way that this changes. So I, this is an ugly color, but I'm gonna choose this just to give us an idea of what this looks like. So we chose the color, but it didn't show up So because we need to remove the image. So we remove the image, and there you go. We got the color there, and we got how it looks. So it's very easy, in a couple of clicks, you can change the color. You can upload your own image if you wanted to into the background. You can change the placement of the images as well. And in this way, uh, you can customize the look and the feel of how the page is from a branding standpoint. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrate is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillrite today. Link in the description. Next, I wanted to show you a couple more different adjustments. So again, everything is made up by sections. So we have a space section here, which is just designed to move this down the page. If we wanted to, we could delete that or we could add a column within this section. So if we added a column, it would break this into two. Let's add a column here. You'll be able to see. Right, so now we have two columns that are that can be filled with content, and we could drag or drop content into that column. Pretty snazzy, right? Pretty cool, pretty new age. Other, some other ones, again, everything is a section. So within the section, we have the logo section, right? We have one column. So if we wanted to, we could break this, we could duplicate this, and it's gonna now have two columns. You can see that. So that way, if you wanted to, you could have different elements on the page. Let's just do, actually, you know what? Let's duplicate it one more time so you can see what that looks like. There you go. So that simply, you can very easily um, create the look and feel of your dreams when it comes to this particular landing page. I'm gonna just go through one or two more from the design standpoint, and then we'll kind of talk more about functionality a little bit here. So we have the main content. Now this main content is a little bit more complex, as you can see here. So if we open it, there are two columns. One is an image, one is the content. So if we come here to the image column, we can also adjust this. This is an image which has been dragged into here. So if we wanted to, we could just click edit and that would allow us to edit and upload a new image. Uh, but we could also change other things if we want to like the background color, et cetera. I kind of like it being on the white. So I'm going to leave that there. If we wanted to, we could then alter as well the look and the feel of the text on the right here. So again, changing, having a background, maybe changing the margin or something like that. If we're happy with that, then we don't have to change it at all. If we wanted to directly change the text, we just have to go here and click and you could specify the font, the size, line spacing, all of these elements, and even the type of check mark if we wanted to. Want to get really happy, we could go into some, some of these icons and maybe have a question mark or we could have something like, more, more out there, a little bit more offbeat. Uh, if you want to have more personality, I guess we could have a hippo, right? <laughs> really interesting ways to 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 really you know make this kind of leap off the page or to be more in the line of what we're going for when it comes to our comic book. So I'm going to keep it there as more traditional uh, with that because I don't really have one uh, as well, <laughs> an idea for the comic book that I want to include. Most of my work, dude, is just marketing other people's products. I love getting attention for other people. Um, that's what I do with my coaching sessions as well, helping people step by step through this process and helping them launch campaigns. And also from an agency perspective, we also help as well with execution. So that's really my goal. My dream, my love uh, is helping 
helping other people with with their creative work. Uh, so that being said, you know, let's get back here. So I went over some of the functionality and I'll let you explore more of that on your own time when it comes to the page sections. Okay. Next, what I'd like to really quickly touch on is just some of these widgets. So what are some of the widgets what you might care about? For example, the video widget. So all you got to do is drag this here, let it go. And there you go. You got a video whiz bang. And then you're just going to specify the embed code from YouTube or Vimeo, whatever code uh, you're using. So I use a lot of Vimeo and YouTube, obviously. You, know, you can easily just copy and paste the embed code there. And then that video is going to show up right there where you want them to see it. Okay. And I think actually by accident, I just delete it. That other section, there we go. So you got the back. I just hit control Z. So some other things, for example, might be a form. So let's put the form here so you guys can see. The form is just if we didn't want people to click this pop-up and we just want them to enter their name and email right there, smack dab on the landing page, can very easily do that by just listing the form. So I'll just do one or two more to give you guys an idea here. Uh, so for example, if we wanted to, we could have a countdown. Countdowns are a very effective way of marketing launches. Uh, so if you were gonna go live, you could say like being, you can download a free sample for a limited time. I probably don't use this as much with pre-launch landing pages the way I'm describing today. I would use that more when it comes to sales pages or announcing uh, you're gonna be going live with a Kickstarter, which I talk about in the Kickstarter launch formula, which I'll put a link down below. So anything there, that you want to include can be in the widgets section here. In the styles section, this is where, the, where um, a designer or yourself can customize a lot of the look and the feel of the actual page. So for example, let's do a gradient. There you go. We've got a gradient style. If we want to do a line style, it'd be more hollowed out. And I'm also going to do rounded shape. That's going to change the feel to be a little bit more soft in nature. Or we could do a pill. I'm just going to do rounded shape. We can change the font if we want to, the text size, line spacing, bold, uh, all of these. And maybe I'm just going to also have it be italic just for demonstration purposes. And so, and you know, can even do a little bit more. So that's first of all going to be the button. So I'm going to save that so that when we save it, it's going to render those changes. Okay. And there you can see on the right, it changed the look and the feel of that particular button. Uh, some other ones would be just, uh, you know, style with background, fave icon. Fave icon is just a little icon up here that you see. Um, CSS, that's a little bit more intense. That stands for cascading style sheets. That's used by a lot of HTML or a lot of web designers will use custom CSS to instruct the web browser to display in a certain way. I don't think you really need to do this, honestly. Um, CSS is going to be more important if you're building like a full-fledged website maybe and you're working with like a high-end designer who knows what he's talking about with that. Uh, so you don't have to worry too much about that. So you got that when it comes to styles. We changed the look in the field. This button is definitely leaping off the page. Let's just go really quickly into settings and then we're going to show you one final thing which is going to be able to turn on this mechanism which you can use to again build a massive audience leading up to your campaign, a Kickstarter campaign, Indiegogo campaign, product launch, or you're just trying to become a comic book creator creator in the long run. So this is the most important part uh, in the long run, which is SEO. That's um, something that I definitely love. And SEO is really just deciding what you want people to find you by. So you could have the title of your comic book if you wanted to for the SEO page title. This is when people Google the name of the comic book. This is how it's going to appear in Google. And you might also make a description here and some keywords. Other things here would be for social. So I've seen this a lot. A lot of my students will be like, Sal, I've been trying to get people to share this, but when they share it on Facebook, it just doesn't look right. It doesn't, it doesn't look very nice. You can customize the image that will appear when people share this link on social media, be it Facebook or other places. So you can upload a custom image and a custom description. So you can actually control more of the marketing experience that way. In addition, you can install Google Analytics here, as you can see under settings um, in the header section, if you need some kind of tracking code or something like that, maybe the Facebook pixel, you can also install that very easily from the settings. And of course, you can also specify language. So there's one final piece of the puzzle that I think is, is very important that we should talk about. And the reason why this is so important is this is how you're going to store the database of leads, also known as your audience or contact information. How are you going to store this database? How are you going to communicate with those? That's what I want to talk about next. So if you haven't yet, go and watch my other video on uh, Aweber, because that is the tool that we recommend for email email marketing. Uh, I will include a link down below to my tutorial of Aweber and also the link crowdcrux.com slash Aweber. If you want to check it out, there's a free plan as well as a premium plan when it comes to Aweber. So 
what ends up happening is people will come here and you need a place for them to go. Uh, so there's different things you can do here, like editing uh, the look and the feel of the of the actual page uh, pop up. I like to make this so that when people click it, it's going to then be notified within your analytics that people actually click that button, whether or not they go to the next step. So first of all, that's the what's called the the click event. OK, when it comes to this particular button here, if we click edit pop up, we're going to then have to what's called edit the integration. So this gets a little bit more technical. So what's going to happen by default is that you're going to get a lead notification at whatever email you have there uh, or that's available. Now, this is not a scalable solution. OK, you need some kind of a integration, for example, Aweber. So what I want to do here is you come here to integrations. OK, I'm going to click more services, and you're going to select the tool which you use for uh, email marketing. Now, historically, I have used MailChimp because it's free up until 2,000 subscribers. However, it's become extremely expensive, and I don't think the functionality has really kept up. So I'm transitioning a lot of my email marketing, and I do recommend for a lot of my students to consider a different tool. So for now, we're going to be recommending Aweber because I already set this up. So we're going to say Aweber account. We're going to click Connect. And what I'm going to go through now is the process to be able to actually connect this. So first of all, it's loading this. Uh, you're going to have to log into your Aweber account. Okay, so once you have a connected your Aweber account, you can see here it says uh, account was successfully connected. We can then click close after you entered your login information there. Then we're going to click the X button and then we can select here from integrations Aweber accounts. Then we can select destination, which is CrowdCrux. Now, if we wanted to, we could also select a tag. So I'm going to say comic book leads. Okay, click save. Then we're going to click next. And I'm also going to delete this lead notification because we don't need that. So now we have email. I think we did say we wanted to capture the name and I think I might have just not saved that. Or we're just going to say a default lead page just to kind of speed up the process here for you guys. And I'm not going to include a lead magnet, but we want to include the lead magnet, which would be the PDF of this sample of the comic book. Okay, I'm going to click save and close. And now what are we going to do? We're going to click publish. And in a few short seconds, we're going to be able to visit that page. So now I'm going to click copy. I'm going to go to a different URL here. I'm going to paste that link. And this is going to bring up this on the web for everyone to see. Okay, so now people can come here. You can market this on social media. You can market this with paid advertising. You can market this uh, on your you know, your your own personal email marketing newsletter in terms of your friends and family. You could put this, if you want to put a QR code, right? You could paste this on a t-shirt. You could do whatever you want. But the main thing here is that uh, the goal is digital marketing. So I mainly, you know, when it comes to marketing, I'm thinking about online marketing, social media, paid ads, you know, putting out content, even doing things like engaging in Facebook groups. You can send people to a place where they can download a free copy of your comic book. Plus you get it delivered to them automatically. Plus you have a place where they can enter their name and email in order to do that. So if we click here, let's just say we have our email be uh, maybe like test at gmail.com. We'll just say test Sal, name Sal, send me the guide. So this is going to, as we specified, redirect to like a, a default lead page. Uh, you could set up your own thank you page, which I do recommend. There we go. And now in a few short minutes, it should register within Aweber that we had someone enter their name and email and to join our email list. So I'm going to come here to Aweber and I have a link down below with the tutorial going through Aweber as well as a link down below to sign up for Aweber at crowdcrux.com slash Aweber. Now, I know that for a lot of beginner, beginners out there, this can seem like a lot of steps, right? But um, if you think about it, once you do it, all you got to do is then start marketing your actual your actual page. You don't have to do anything else. So you only really have to do this one time. But um, what this allows you to do is to set up many landing pages in the future to set up your whole website and to have this to be running in the background. You can continue to gather leads for years and build a massive wait list. So that way you can always introduce people to your new products, to your new comic books, to the new things you're doing or writing or creative ventures. Maybe someday you set up a Patreon, right? You can do all of that because you've done exactly what we talk about. Great. So as you can see here, I have set this up and test Sal is now part of our database. The reason why it says pending, the person who's at that, at that Gmail has to confirm their subscription. 
And I think you can also change that if you don't want people to confirm, I believe in the settings. But um, this, you know, by default, it encourages people to confirm their subscription if they really did want to join your, your list. So there you go. Set it all up. It, it didn't take us very long at all. And uh, you just discovered two extremely powerful tools which you can use in order to set up the entire marketing engine for your comic book and for new products in the future. So this is, again, very powerful tools. Uh, again, you're only as good as the tools in which you use. So if this is something that you're interested in, I already mentioned Aweber, and I'll include a link down below at crowdcrux.com slash Aweber. That allows you to set up an email database, and you could use that for free. I do recommend the basic plan because you get a lot more functionality with this. I think it's like 20 bucks a month or something like that. So, so I have a link down there and also the tutorial. But if you do want to use Lead Pages, Lead Pages, unfortunately, does not have a free plan. And that's because it's a really great tool, honestly. And, and they obviously know that, so they try charge for it. So on the basic, you can get one complete website, an entire website, as well as uh, the domain, right, that which you can then route to it. So for example, your, your comic book or your publisher domain, you could have one full-fledged website. In addition, you can have as many landing pages as you want. So you could have one landing page, you test out, you drive some traffic, maybe another one, you drive some traffic, you test out how they perform, you test out different cover photos, you can do some really cool, interesting marketing tests, and you can see the percentage of people that opt in to that particular landing page. And uh, as to close off this video, I will show you some analytics as well. In addition, you get unlimited traffic and leads, you get a free custom domain name, which is pretty cool, free hosting, mobile responsive templates, templates, lead notification, you get all of that, as well as if you want a one-on-one -on -one starter call and many integrations, you get all that if you're interested for $37 a month and you can start for free if you wanna try it out. Uh, so it's a 14 day free trial. For the majority of you out there, I do recommend the free plan. We, Like I mentioned, we run an agency. Uh, I run an agency and we do have the pro plan for that just because it's a little bit more advanced and allows us to have many different types of clients and sites on it. Um, so for example, with this one, you can get uh, three sites build uh, when it comes to that amount for 74 bucks. And you also get sales. So you could uh, collect sales if you wanted to have recurring payments, digital products, really anything if you wanted to using the pro version and you also get unlimited a b testing and that's actually a function we use a lot however you do have to know what you're doing with a b testing it is a little bit more comprehensive if you're looking to be a marketer in the long run i think it's worth it because you're going to learn that very quickly and that's a very valuable skill set to have if you're just kind of getting started i think that the you know the beginning standard plan is probably okay and 37 bucks a month that's not going to break the bank and again this is something you're going to be using for a long time because if you do set it up correctly and it takes you maybe like 30 minutes to do maybe an hour, right? You can then have this landing page, which you send people and you can continually be collecting leads leading up to the product launch on Kickstarter, leading up to the announcement of a comic book campaign. It can be an extremely powerful way to build your own audience in your own community. So just to finish off this tutorial video, this data is a tiny bit off just because I was kind of fooling around with things, uh, you know, off the video. But um, if you come here, you can see, first of all, the reason why it says two conversions is that I set up when I click the button of the lead page, it would count as a conversion. So it is a little bit off here when it comes to the data. But as you can see here, you have unique visitor, you have the view, and you also have the conversion rate. So if you set this up in a more traditional fashion, it would say one conversion, it would say 100%. Uh, I just specified the button click as the conversion. And so, so I think it, it counted it twice, honestly, here. But it's very easy just to see you maybe sent 100 people there, you got this many unique visitors, or this many views, 100 visit, you know, views, we could say probably more like 150 views, maybe you got like 130 visitors, unique visitors, and you got this many conversions. And you can track the conversion rate of that particular landing page. And if you wanted to, at any point in time, you could just reset the analytics for that if you don't wanna maintain that data, or if you did, you could then um, you know just maintain that and you could sort this out by time, by, by month, et cetera. So if this sounds like something that you find to be valuable and interesting, and you wanna talk more individually about your campaign, your project, your comic book, uh, doing a Kickstarter campaign, doing a crowdfunding campaign for this, getting this out there to the right people in, in their hands, and really how to drive attention and traffic, uh, you wanna get a consultation on that, you also want an intensive coaching call, you wanna complete homework and to-do list, when it comes to that, as well as understand some of the insider tricks of the trade. This is one of the best investments which you can make. And you can go down to the link down below at crowdcrux.com slash coaching to book a one-on-one -on -one individual coaching call with me, where we talk about you, your goals, your project, um, give you feedback as well up until this point. And for some of you out there who do have a budget as well, I can also help on the execution standpoint for a limited number of projects. If we believe in you, if we think that you can be successful, then we would be willing to work on your project 
project. If not, maybe not the best fit. However, a lot of other resources, a lot of other people that we can introduce you to and a lot of ways in which we can help you. And finally, if you're still on the learning kick, number one, go and check out my book, The Kickstarter Launch Formula on Amazon and Audible. But we also have a a course called Smash Your Kickstarter Goal. And we'll open that up occasionally. You can shoot me an email at my website, crowdcrux.com. Just go to the about section. Let me know you're interested in the course. We'll add you to the wait list. And next time I open that up, uh, we'll get you in there. At least we'll let you know that that's happening or we have a sale. And uh, that way we can make sure that you're getting up to speed quickly and you're learning as much as possible in a short span of time so you can launch, you can have a powerful campaign, you can get a river of funding, and most importantly, you're working with the best tools that can get you the results that you need. Thank you for watching this video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Come subscribe to this channel if you want more content like this. Again, my name is Salvador Brigman, and I will see you next time.